ok good morning let us get started. So, in today's lecture we are going to look at uh, steady diffusion uh, in other coordinate uh, systems ok. So, this is a steady diffusion in other uh, coordinate systems. So, uh, till now we have developed uh, steady diffusion only in uh, Cartesian coordinates right. So, in the um, Cartesian coordinates however, uh, the method that we have developed is applicable in any uh, orthogonal coordinate system ok. So, couple of examples of these orthogonal coordinate systems we are going to look at are uh, are the uh, polar coordinates or or the cylindrical coordinates right. And the other example we are going to look at is uh, axisymmetric coordinates ok. Fine. Uh, so, by we are going to kind of go into each of these examples and then see how uh, we have to kind of modify uh, the method that we have developed. So, that we can adapt to these two uh, coordinate systems that are orthogonal uh, uh, that have an orthogonal coordinate system ok orthogonal axis. Uh, now, let me first take up the polar coordinates or the r theta coordinates ok this is also the r theta coordinates ok uh, and develop this method. So, we are looking at uh, the polar or uh, the r theta coordinate system So, first thing is how does the domain look like in r and theta coordinates ok. Um, so, we have to kind of draw the domain um, basically we have So, I have kind of drawn uh, some cells here this is uh, let us say the r direction is in this direction and uh, theta is in this direction ok. And the unit vectors that we have are E r hat in the direction of the r and uh, E theta hat in the direction of the theta ok. So, let us say we want to solve for diffusion in a in a circular geometry ok or if you have an annular region we want to solve diffusion in there then how do we go about this. But we know that the system itself is uh, an ortho normal system ok. So, let us introduce the uh, cell centroids which I would like to call it as let us call this as uh, uh, p this is p cell this is east cell this is west this is north and this is south ok. That is what we have and uh, the radii for example, For example, let us say we want to calculate what is this radii. So, this is uh, this is some r p ok that is the radius for the p uh, cell right which is also of course, same as the r for capital E and r for capital W and so on ok. We also have these uh, names for the faces right. So, we said that this will be our east face similar to the previous developments this is west and this is north and this is south faces ok. And then uh, we also need to know what would be the uh, radial extent of the cell right that would be we would we would call it as uh, delta r ok. So, this is our delta r and we also need to know what will be our uh, azimuthal extent right. So, this is uh, we call it as delta theta ok. So, this is my delta theta which is the azimuthal extent for this L p and uh, delta r is the radial extent for this L p ok. Similarly, we need to identify uh, what will be the distance between the east cell centroid and the p cell centroid like in the Cartesian coordinates we had delta x e, delta x w, delta y north and delta y south. Similarly, we have here 
what will be the angle between the P cell and the east cell centroid. So, that is this angle ok. So, this angle would be we will call it as delta theta east ok that is connecting the cell centroid E with the cell centroid P fine. Similarly, we will uh, call this angle which is between the P and the W as uh, delta theta W ok. So, those are the angles. Uh, then we also need to know what will be the radial distance between the cell centroid of north cell and the P cell. So, that means we want to know what will be this distance right. We want to know what is this distance and of course, we also want to know what will be this distance right. These uh, similar to the notations before we will call it as del r north and del r south ok. So, we have now identified all of them ok. Is that clear? Of course, uh, what will be the radius for the north face? What will be the radius for the north face? That will be r sub n ok. So, if you want to calculate what is the radius for this guy, this would be r sub n ok. This would be r sub n that is for the nth phase and similarly r sub little s r sub s for the south phase ok. So, that uh, we can comfortably have those values as well. So, this is r s that is connecting the south phase and the north phase with the centroid ok. Fine. Uh, so, let us move on our governing equation is still the same that is uh, del dot k grad phi plus uh, del dot k grad t plus some s t equals 0. Uh, so, we will write it down uh, once you <coughs> take make a note of all these things ok. So, what is your governing equation? Governing equation is uh, uh, I would use the t ok because we already have theta here I would avoid the phi for a uh, for this particular problem. So, we will say del dot k grad t uh, plus some s t equals 0 ok where k has replaced gamma and uh, t has replaced phi and uh, s t has replaced s phi ok. So, that is what we have this is our steady diffusion equation that we are uh, working with. All right. So, what is the first step? Uh, first step is to integrate this on the control volume that is for the P cell. So, that will be integral control volume del dot k grad t dv plus integral over the control volume uh, st dv equals 0 ok. That is what we have. Uh, then next step is to invoke Gauss divergence theorem. and convert the uh, volume integral into a surface integral right. So, that would be integral control surface uh, k grad t uh, dot d a bar right uh, plus integral over the control volume s t times t v equals 0 right. Now, we are going to introduce a couple of assumptions. First one is the source value we can calculate at the cell centroid and then say that that remains the same for the entire cell that is one approximation. The other one is that the k grad t value on the faces can be assumed to be the phase centroid value that prevails over the entire phase right. We are making these two assumptions and then converting this uh, line integral into a discrete summation that is k grad t on the particular phase f dot a f and this summation here is f over the phases east, west, north and south ok that is for all the phases of the control volume. Plus, we have also uh, introduced an average value that is s t bar times delta v equals 0. All right. Now, we have introduced these metrics the delta volume for the cell and the a f bar right. These are the vectors the phase area vectors that are pointing outside the control volume. So, we need to go back and see what will be our east west north south for these uh, values on the east west north south faces for the area vector. So, what is what is delta v here? how much would be delta v for this for the p cell. So, r p is the radius right r p is the radius r p times delta theta times delta r right r d theta d r would be the volume of this particular cell that is for the p cell. So, that would be I would write it as r p times uh, delta theta is delta theta times delta r right. So, this is the volume for the p cell right everybody agrees. Okay. Now, uh, 
I go back what will be the area vectors can we take a look at the area vectors. So, A east will be in this direction right similarly A west will be in this direction A north would be in this and A south would be in this. I am not exactly drawing at the face centroid that is just to you know avoid overlaying on the previous letters here ok. So, what is uh, what would be A east? A east bar would be how much? A east bar is basically what will be the A east bar magnitude? delta r right uh, similar to delta y we have now here delta r. Now, what is uh, the direction in which it is pointing? It is pointing in the e hat t theta right e hat theta ok that is what the direction in which it is pointing. What will be a west bar? That will be minus delta r times e theta hat ok that is pointing in the negative e theta direction ok. What about uh, a north? A north is basically this phase magnitude right and it is pointing in the uh, positive r direction. So, what will be A north bar? R p or uh, ok R p or R n it should be R n right because we are looking at a phase that is at a location radius on the north phase. So, this is r sub n times uh, delta theta that will give you the length of that surface of the north face and it is pointing in which direction? E r hat ok it is pointing in E r hat and what about A south bar that will be minus R s it is not R n right because we are looking at a smaller surface now this is R s times delta theta times E r hat right is that correct? We are looking at the uh, south face right it is in the downward direction right north is upward ok. Sorry E r or E n or oh, E r what it is E r ok I think I have not written clearly here you want the subscript right this is r r ok fine this is E r hat. Oh, we do not have E n anyway right the only things we have are E r hat and E theta hat fine ok. Of course, now we have not looked at what is the a definition for the del operator right that is what is remaining there because uh, we need the del operator in evaluating the gradients here right. So, we need the del operator. So, what would be del bar in cylindrical coordinates or polar coordinates this will be E r hat partial partial r plus E theta hat 1 upon r partial partial theta ok. Of course, if you have a three dimensional volume right if you have a cylinder then you have to add E z hat partial partial z right or if you want to call it as x it will be i hat partial partial x right that extra derivative you have to add. Otherwise, this is the definition for nabla in cylindrical coordinates ok. So, far fine questions till now on the area vectors no E c right everybody understands ok very good. Let us move on then and let us move on with the uh, calculating these values. So, what will be k grad t uh, uh, east would look like? k grad t east would look like uh, k east right e r hat partial t partial r on the east face plus e theta hat 1 by r little e partial partial theta right partial partial theta. Uh, is what it will look like is that correct k grad t on the phase e right we have to evaluate f on these phases on the east west north south. So, I first calculate it for east ok. So, that would be k grad t e would be k e that is gamma e similar to gamma e diffusion evaluated on the phase times we have a grad t that is e r hat partial t partial r on the east phase plus e theta hat 1 by r this r would be should be evaluated where on the phase that is r little e times I think I have missed uh, nicely the temperature. So, partial d partial theta ok. So, that is what we have uh, evaluated on the east phase fine ok. Now, what would be a e bar we have just written it down a e bar was how much delta r e theta hat. Now, if you take a dot product or inner product of these two quantities what term survives out of the two only the second one because you have e theta dot e theta dot right. 
e theta hat dot e theta hat that is the only one that survives the first term does not come into play. Uh, why is this happening? This is happening because we have chosen a orthogonal coordinate system ok that has to be kept in mind if it is not orthogonal then we will have terms coming from both of them right. So, that is the uh, philosophy here right you have an orthogonal coordinate system uh, you only get gradients survive in the direction in which you are taking the you know the dot products ok. So, that means I can rewrite this as uh, so, what will be now uh, k grad t east dot a east bar how much is this this will be k e right only the second term survives k e uh, delta r upon r east times partial t partial theta evaluated east right is that correct k e delta r by r east to t partial t partial theta. Now, similarly can you tell me what would be k grad t uh, west dot a west bar k k west ok delta r upon r w partial t partial theta on the west phase would there be a plus or minus or something there will be a minus right there will be a minus fine. Now, let me look at what is a north bar what was a north bar if you go back r n delta theta e r hat right. So, let me put that back in here. So, this is uh, which direction this is r n delta theta e r hat right that is what we have. Now, what would be then k grad t north dot a north bar oh how is r e different from r p ok. So, it is not different. So, the question is how is this r sub little e different from uh, r capital P right it is not different it is the same thing I just wrote it e because we are evaluated on the face ok essentially uh, you are correct. So, all the radii for P and E and W are all the same only it is different for r north and r south ok only to make the distinction I have written r sub e and r sub W but it is same as r P ok for the P cell. other questions ok we understand all this ok fine then uh, what about k grad t n dot a n bar how much is this. So, which term now survives out of the two this one survives right when you are doing in the north and this will not survive. So, what will be the value k north r n delta theta ok partial t partial r evaluated on north face right that is k n r n delta theta times partial t partial r on the north face correct. Fine ok then what would be k grad t uh, bar south dot a south bar minus ok k s r s delta theta partial t partial r on the south face ok. So, we have now got all the um, expressions evaluated right, but of course, now we have these partial derivatives for which uh, what we will do we will make a linear profile assumption assume that the temperature varies linearly between the cell centroids on all the directions. Then of course, I can write uh, partial t partial theta uh, in the east direction as what. So, we are evaluating at uh, partial t partial theta in the east direction. So, we are evaluating this on this particular phase right on this phase right. How do I calculate that using linear profile assumption it will be temperature at the east cell minus temperature at the p cell divided by what will be the distance we are traveling delta theta east right not r because we are we are not doing 1 by r we are doing only partial t partial theta right. I am not doing 1 by r partial t partial theta in which case I would have had an r there right I just have partial t partial theta. So, what will this be t east minus t p upon delta theta east that is all right it is only we are traveling the theta direction right because the r factor has already been taken into account into the grad del term right in the del term right in the nabla fine 
ok. What will be partial T partial theta on the west face? T p minus T west upon delta theta w ok that is basically the angular um, distance delta theta w between the p cell and the west cell fine ok. Then uh, what about uh, we have two more terms that is partial t partial r on the north face that is the gradient in the radial direction right radial temperature gradient on the north face. So, we are talking about uh, uh, calculating the gradient on uh, this particular phase right what will that be T n minus T p right upon delta R n right that is basically the distance in the R direction. So, this would be come out to be T p minus T capital or this would be T n minus T p right ok this will be T n minus T p upon delta R n right fine. Then uh, what will be partial T partial R in the south direction T p minus T south upon delta R south ok fine ok all right. So, then uh, what do we do of course, we need to introduce a model for our source term right we have this S bar T uh, which we will call it as what S C plus S p T p right that is why I will write it as and delta v is R p delta r delta theta right that we already have fine ok. Now, can we uh, plug in all these things uh, back into the original equation which uh, which is basically this equation right and see and rearrange them send all the coefficients of T p or the T p terms to the right hand side leave everything else the east west north south on the left hand side and um, can we write it in a form that is acceptable to us in terms of finite volume method. So, I would rearrange that and if you do the algebra you will get a p t p equals a east t east plus a west t west plus a north t north plus a south t south plus b ok. Then can you tell me what will be a east? A east uh, what will what terms will go into A east terms coming from here right the k grad t dot A e these terms will go. So, what will A east will contain k e delta r by r sub e times uh, this gradient has uh, t east minus t p by delta theta e e right. So, essentially the delta theta e will also go into the coefficient right because we are talking about coefficient of temperature at the east cell center right T e right. So, then can you tell me what will be that A e should be K e K e delta r upon r e delta theta e right fine. So, this uh, will go into coefficient for T e and also it will go into coefficient for T p on the other, other right hand side fine. So, ok similarly what will be A west? k w delta r upon r w delta theta w right that is E c what will be a north k n r n ok k n r n delta theta upon delta r n this this uh, factor in the denominator is coming because of the temperature gradient right delta r n is coming because of that and then what will be a south minus no minus k s r s delta theta upon delta r south ok fine. So, we can calculate all of these ok. Then what will be uh, our a p term a east uh, plus a west plus a north plus a south minus s p s p r p delta r delta theta right fine. What will be the term b? What will be s c r p delta r delta theta right. 
that is all. So, um, does not matter whether you are looking at a cylindrical or a Cartesian you get the same form right for the working equation and of course, the coefficients would change accordingly fine. So, we have only looked at a steady diffusion in polar coordinates questions till now. Yes, so the question is we are getting the same form because we are considering the orthogonal coordinate system that is true right because we have orthogonal coordinate system we get um, well uh, wh what I mean by same form is basically we are looking at in the uh, this equation ok we could arrange all of them and of course, the coefficients also uh, are uh, you, you do not have anything else right you do not have the non orthogonality components come into play at the moment. We will look at them. How does the non orthogonality come into play little later? Yes. Can you scroll up? Okay. Okay, you want to note it down? Okay. Little more up. No, we are not, that is what. So the question is why why do not I have an R here? R delta E theta e right. So, what is the temperature? Temperature this is partial t partial theta right the gradient is with respect to theta not with respect to if this were 1 by r partial t partial theta then I would have written as r e delta theta e right. Do you see that we are calculating the temperature gradient with respect to azimuthal angle we are looking at partial t partial theta not partial t upon r partial theta right. If if that is the case then the distance will come into play right now the distance is basically in terms of the angular positions right. So, that is why we do not have the r in here fine other questions. Yes. Ah ok a e and uh, what else a east and ok dimensionally very good. So, A east and A north are not matching dimensionally right that is because we are working with R theta coordinates right are they not matching they are matching right because delta theta is anyway in radians right. So, no issues other questions. Right. So, ok. So, that is all the question or? Ah, ok. So, why are we making a linear assumption, a linear profile assumption along the theta direction also? Can there be any other assumptions? Can there be any other assumptions? Yes, you can go for a second order quadratic expression and things like that, which we are not considering at the moment, right. Uh, in fact, it is usually not considered by um, most of the solvers as such but it can be made as well ok. If you want to increase the order of accuracy then you have to go for a quadratic fit here right. Now, the idea is essentially you take this cells small enough that linear assumption would be sufficient as such right. Uh, so, in the context of uh, higher order schemes which we will get to uh, probably once we get to convection we will look at uh, higher order schemes. In that context we will see how to have um, other than linear fits for the dependent variables ok. Other questions? No? Clear? Fine? All right. So, then uh, ok very good. So, one question I have is what will happen at the r equal to 0? Will you still get a cell that looks like this? Will you still get a uh, geometry that looks like this? r equal to 0 what will be the cells then just uh, adjacent to r equal to 0 how do they look like they look like more like sectors right then how do you modify this entire thing because uh, whatever I have discussed is now like a, an orthogonal coordinate system right. Now, do you need can you handle that if you have r equal to 0 the cells that contain r equal to 0 right. Uh, so, what will happen r s will be 0 in which case what will happen to the cell cells will become more like sectors. So, will the still the same formulation work or will not work 
maybe that is something for you to think ok. So, what about uh, uh, cells near r tends to 0 right, how do they look like, what will happen to the equations all these things is for you to think and see if we can still work with this or not ok. All right, let us move on to uh, the other example of a an orthogonal coordinate system which is an axisymmetric uh, coordinate system ok. So, we are looking at axisymmetric uh, coordinate system fine. So, axisymmetric coordinate system is something specific to engineering as such is not it because it is not in the mathematics as you learn it right because you only learn Cartesian cylindrical and spherical coordinate, but when you come to engineering you have this thing called axisymmetric right. What is axisymmetry uh, mean independent of theta right. So, something so what is independent of theta what quantity the dependent variable right the dependent variable if it is uh, independent of theta that means there is no variation of the dependent variable in the theta direction right then ok then wh why do we care ok something is not varying in theta direction. So, what is the simplicity that it offers the derivatives along that direction are 0 ok. So, essentially what we mean is that uh, no change of the dependent variable that is either t or phi along uh, theta direction ok. Here we are saying that theta is our azimuthal direction then the derivatives of the theta of the phi are equal to 0 or if our dependent variable is phi then partial phi partial theta equal to 0 ok. Ok then what does the uh, simplicity or advantage that it offers why should we have a special case for axis symmetry. Uh, so, essentially the three dimensional problem now reduces to a two dimensional problem right essentially earlier you had r theta x if you call it as the original problem then uh, you can only get away by solving what coordinates r and x and uh, what about theta you would solve it by like one radian ok. So, essentially you would consider one radian extent in the theta direction and then you would only solve for r and x ok uh, that is good that means we have reduced the complexity by one dimension which is a great thing. Um, what will be these problems usually that you encounter in reality in applications any applications where do you see this thing what kind of geometries you will have anything that is uh, bodies of revolution right. If you have uh, diffusion, conduction, flow all these things in bodies of revolution right then you can hopefully work with them in axis symmetric coordinates because it offers uh, reduction in dimension. So, what are these bodies of revolution examples? pipe ok, conduction ok this is basically let us say pipe flow right we want to only look at pipe flow uh, with r and x coordinates right ok. What other things heat exchanges ok essentially these are all pipe flows ok. What about flow on a let us say on a missile or something right anything that is of body of axis symmetric thing right it is body of revolution right. So, essentially flow over uh, kind of missiles or anything like that ok and the conduction in again a cylinder right if you have diffusion in cylinder all these things will come into play. So, these are basically flow over uh, let us say rockets or something and also uh, diffusion in uh, uh, cylinder ok in a cylinder fine. So, these are all examples ok uh, fine then let me draw a, a domain for this and also discretize it. So, we are talking about a domain ok this is my domain and of course, this is different from this is different from a two dimensional domain because now we have what? we have an axis right basically this is uh, revolved around the axis such that you get that full 3D domain right if you take a cylinder or something. So, that means my coordinates are what this is my r sorry this is my x 
and uh, this is uh, my this is the r coordinate and what about the theta? Theta is in this direction right this is theta right that is uh, ok fine. So, then uh, let me also name this L. So, this is P cell this is east this is west this is north and this is south ok. Uh, again we have x and r direction. So, I would call uh, this distance of the P cell as delta x and the y extent of the P cell as delta r ok. And similar to before we have east face, west face, north face and the south faces ok. Uh, we have all these things then uh, what about the distance between the P cell and the east cell? What do we call it as delta x e and this would be delta x w ok. And what about the uh, north cell and the P cell? This would be how much? Delta r north and this would be delta r south ok fine ok. Now, uh, I have one basic question we, we just named uh, r as y right. How is it different from a two dimensional situation? I just drew a rectangular cells right a Cartesian cell and uh, told you that ok this is not a Cartesian coordinate system instead of y I just replaced with r. So, what is the difference between axis symmetric domain and a two dimensional domain? How is this different? r r cannot be negative ok. So, r is not negative whereas, y can be negative fine let us not worry about a let us say we are talking about a two dimensional system in the uh, positive y coordinate is that the same as uh, axis symmetric somebody else had an answer here area is different that is right. So, why area is different? So, we are talking about uh, one radian right we are talking about a 3 D thing. So, that means, we are talking about all this entire mesh I have drawn is actually sweeped in the theta direction by one radian right. So, we have this cylindrical cells that means, uh, the area is different area is different that means, if it were a two dimensional domain then does not matter any uh, y I consider right any y considered will have the same area as long as delta y is the same right. For example, I consider a 2D domain if I consider uh, a cell by this delta y or this delta y the same, but at any different location. So, let us say this is at y 1 this is at y 2 right. So, for these two the area is always delta y times uh, minus i hat right whereas, whereas if I have a r theta coordinates what will happen to the area. So, that means, you are looking at a let us say a pipe flow right. Now, if I look at the same delta r ok delta r is the same, but the area included would be larger if you are at a higher radius right that means, I consider uh, this is my same delta r right, but I look at another case where my mean radius is smaller, but still this is also the same delta r, but what will be the area included by these two? It is different because you have r times delta theta right r times theta. So, that means, if you have a uniform flow through a pipe and uh, uh, that means, the if you kind of make the pipe into two sections from 0 to capital R that you make it two sections 0 to R by 2 and R by 2 to capital R. Then uh, if we have the same uh, velocity let us say mean velocity then which of these will have a higher flow rate? The outer section will have higher flow rate although you have divided into two halves right in terms of radius that means, the area is coming into play right that is what is the main difference between the axis symmetry and the two dimensional things ok. So, that is the difference. Uh, and that is what we have to consider while generating the area vectors and the volume for these cells ok. So, that means, we are talking about axis symmetry, but we are actually talking about a three dimensional system with 
r x and theta that is one radian okay we are actually developing this fine so one radian is equal to delta theta fine question still now that is the main difference clear or right so basically okay if i were to draw it again if i take a a 2d cell right so this is my uh, two dimensional situation this is my uh, axis symmetric situation i have these two cells uh, let us say both are of the same size ok this is slightly bigger uh, ok. So, in 2D when I sweep it to three dimensions I would get a, a geometry like this right whereas here when I sweep it in theta direction what do I get I would get a something that goes like this right is not it because of the theta direction right. I would maybe try it a little better. Okay, so so this is the fine, fine. So essentially, the area differs as you are around. Fine. Okay, now this is what we have to use to develop all the area vectors. Let's say this is my P cell. This is the P cell, and uh, uh, this is the delta theta which we would call it as one radian ok and uh, this is the x direction this is the r direction ok r direction is along these lines fine we are we are looking from this side right. So, the theta is out of plane ok uh, then what is our uh, east west north south this is our east right that is what we said when we say this is east face we are actually talking about this entire thing as the east face right. Similarly, when we say west face we are talking about this entire thing as the west face right the back one. When we say north face we are talking about this entire thing as the north face right and we say south face we are talking about the south face here right that is the south face right okay, I think very hard to see this is the south face right ok. So, when we when we said this is east west north south all these faces are swept by one radian right they are all swept by one radian in the theta direction fine which is not the case if you have a two dimensional situation right is that clear you are able to see through ok. Then uh, ok now the tough part uh, what will be the area vectors and the volumes for this particular case. I will go back to the figure ok. Now, essentially you take this grid and then sweep it by theta in the other direction. So, then what will be what will be uh, the volume delta v for this for the p cell we are actually talking about a nominally two dimensional domain, but it is actually cylindrical right with one radian in the delta theta direction. So, what will be the volume for this cell P cell? Uh, what is the two dimensional volume two dimensional area delta r delta theta. Now, how much that should be multiplied with what will be the length in the theta direction r p times delta theta, but delta theta itself is one radian. So, this is basically r p times delta theta times delta r times delta x right because delta r delta x is the two dimensional area times r p delta theta is the length in the theta direction. So, this will come out to be how much because we are considering delta theta equals one radian this will be r p delta r delta x fine. Is this clear to everybody? Yeah, this part. Okay. Then what about the area vectors now? What is the area A east? What will be A e? A east is in the direction 
is in this direction ok. Let us call the unit vectors as E r hat and uh, i hat ok, i hat and E r hat what will be the area vectors? So, basically one way to look at is what will be the length of this line in the r direction delta r now that has to be swept in the theta direction right. So, then that will be how much delta r times r p delta theta is 1 radian right this is same as r little e ok fine what would be a west ok if I were to go back it is basically here what will be this area right we are talking about uh, uh, east face that is this right the one in red right this will be delta r that is delta r right times uh, this r p that we have rotated by 1 radian right that is all the area ok. Now, what will be the west uh, area a w bar minus th there should be a, a I, I hat here is not it i hat ok that is a e bar what about a w bar minus delta r r p 1 radian i hat fine ok. What about a north a north we are actually looking at uh, uh, this guy right what is this length delta x delta x now how much do you have to uh, sweep in the other direction r n times 1 radian delta theta. So, this will be how much this will be delta x times r little north 1 radian times that is all right e r hat ok. Then what about a south bar we minus minus delta x r south 1 radian e r hat fine. R p and R naught are they different? They are different right because we are talking about uh, R p would be this guy right it is this one is R p R naught would be this guy and R south would be this much right. So, they are different right only R little e and R little w are equal to R capital P right only anything on this particular radius would be the same right everybody else is different. Now, what is the extra terms that we got here because of the axisymmetry? We got this R P and R N right they were not there in the case of 2 D right in 2 D it would it would just read delta R delta X right that R factor R times delta theta is the one which is coming out extra is not it. If you kind of remove these guys what will it be? It will be 2 dimensional right that R times 1 radian is something that is extra in the axisymmetry right. Of course, we have not defined the del operator till now um, that has to be also defined fine. Thank you.